Hi guys, welcome along today. Thanks very much for joining me. Uh, today we're going to be having a look at doing an upgrade on these headstock bearings on this R1. So if you've watched any of the recent uploads of the channel, you'd have seen us out on track at Snesterton and at the end of the day found a little bit of play in the headstock bearings. So we're going to resolve that now and do a little upgrade whilst we're in there. So we thought we'd bring you along and show you what we're up to. So first things first, we've got the bike up on some stands on some of the uh, frame supports there. So we need to support the front of the bike so we can take the forks out. Obviously we can't use a paddock stand on the front when the bike looks like that. Once we've got it supported, front wheel out, then the front forks out. To take the front forks out, you need to remove anything connected to the front forks, i.e. the top yoke clamp, the clip-ons, this has got a thumb brake and a steering damper and your lower triple bolts and then you'll be able to pull your forks out. Then it will leave your triple trees or your yokes in the bike. What we then need to do is remove the top nut off of the top yoke here, like so. Then your top clamp will come off. Then you have these two locking nuts. We need to remove both of these locking nuts and then your lower triple tree or lower triple clamp should slide down through the frame. So I've actually taken this apart, inspected it. Can't see any problems with the bearings in there. Quite happy with the condition of the bearings and the races, inner and outer races. However, these are the standard ball roller bearings. So we're gonna carry out a little upgrade to some needle roller bearings and I thought we'd take you along for the ride and show you how to preload it all up properly once it's all back together. So this is the inner race of the bearing here. That's the ball bearing and the inner race is actually this part there that the balls sit on. And in the frame of the bike, here's the top one. In the frame of the bike is still the outer race of the bearing there, which we need to knock out later on. So let's get over to the workbench and show you what we're going to be replacing it with. So here we are with the yoke over at the bench. This is the upgraded bearings that we're going to be fitting today. So we can see the difference in these bearings is that they are tapered needle roller bearings. This helps to keep the preload on the bearing and also helps to spread the load evenly between more surfaces on the bearing roller rather than just a small surface on the ball hopefully giving you a little bit more feedback through the front end of the bike and a little bit less wear. So this kit comes directly with the right bearings for the bike, all balls uh, racing kit. However, you can just buy these universal bearings to the right diameter. So if you do just buy the bearing that's not specified exactly for your bike, something to make sure is the height of the new bearing. So this is a set of forks out of a GSX-R. You can see it's got the original standard ball bearing type bearings in there. This is a kit specified for this bike. And as you can see in this kit, we've actually got a selection of different size washers. You can see that. And they act as shims that need to be placed underneath the new bearing as it's fitted to ensure you get the same bearing height once they're installed. If you've got the wrong bearing height there, then your stem nut won't fit on up this end as the thread won't come far enough through the top clamps. Just something to bear in mind, always if you can, try and buy the parts specifically made for your machine. So we've got our new parts. I know in this case, this one is the lower bearing race because it's got an additional shim on the inside for the thickness of the stem. So there's your new lower bearing and inner and outer race. This is the part that gets fitted in the frame, which we'll do afterwards. You can see it's already got the new seal fitted on the bottom of it, ready to be pushed down onto the stem. This is your top bearing, which again, outer race, inner race, and the seal to go on the top to seal it up once it's all together. So we know we've got the good new parts. First job is to get this old bearing off. So inner race is easy and the seal is easy because they just drop off. And then we need to remove this inner race here from this stem. Here we've got him clamped up nice and tightly in the vise by the yoke. Don't clamp it onto the steering stem at all. And we need to try and get a small chisel, like so, in behind there and just get a little gap and separate it to get it moving forward. We've then got a larger chisel to be able to drive in there afterwards to knock it off up the stem. If 
it doesn't move as easily as that, that one was quite a nice one, you need to work your way around the actual inner race of the bearing and slowly get it to move off. So nobody is perfect, and if you do slightly catch the edge of your triple tree with the chisel and burr a bit of the edge over like that, you can just use a small file and just get in there and just dress the surface flat again, ready for your new bearing to go on nice and square. So we've now got our lower yoke and stem all cleaned up, ready for the new bearing to go on. Before we install it, we must take the new bearing and pack it with some good quality grease. I like using this super long life top 2000 grease, but obviously any good quality grease will do the job. And what we need to do is try and get it right into the needle rollers. So a good way to do this is just to be turning it around, pushing it into all the needle rollers to begin with, like so. And once you've got it in there, then we can go round and round and get them needle rollers to turn, making sure we're packing on the inside race in that gap there as much as we can before we fit them. So once we're happy we've packed as much grease as we can into these new roller bearings, we need to slip it down over our stem, get it as square as we can, and now we need to use a press to push it down all the way home onto its seat on the lower yoke. Now, some people will use a hammer to knock this down. I don't like fitting anything bearing related with force like a hammer. It's nice to press it in nice and smoothly so you can feel what's going on. So we need a tool that will fit the inner race of that bearing and long enough to fit over the shaft of the stem to get it into a press. Ideal is an old piece of scaffold bar with the end ground down to the correct size or an old fork tube or anything like that that you can lay your hands on. We've got this piece of scaffold tube with an end chamfered off so that it nicely fits the inner race of the bearing. Now hopefully we can slip this down and press fit it down onto our stem. So now the new bearing's pressed onto the stem, we need to take out the old outer races. Quick note, don't forget to put your seal on the bottom of your new bearing on the stem before you press the bearing on. I'm only telling you from experience there. So to get this outer race out, one at the top, one at the bottom, we'll need a decent hammer and a nice long drift, something normally made out of brass or something softer than the material of the frame. Otherwise you might damage the actual frame as you're trying to knock it out. So we'll slip this through, get it on the edge of the race of the bearing, work it around, trying to knock it out square, and hopefully she'll drop straight out. Now it's important to note when you're knocking the top one out, get an assistant to push down on the top of the bike so you don't make the bike jump off the stands and end up in a big mess on the floor. It's time to fit the outer race into the frame of the bike, which if you see there, we've actually done on the top already. So we'll show you how we did that on the bottom. Now, some Neanderthals will just smash this in with a hammer. I don't like fitting anything bearing related by just whacking it with a hammer. So what we can do is use the old outer race here to actually press fit the new outer race into the bike, making sure the orientation of this it's correct, obviously, once you push this in, if you get it wrong, you have to try and knock it out. So make sure you've got it right, and then utilizing the outer race and just a nice long bolt with a couple of large bits of metal plate or washers or anything, we can use it as a press and just tighten the nut up and get it to nicely locate into its groove. We will start it off just with a little uh, soft um, plastic mallet just to get it nice and square, and then we'll get this lined up and wind it in. So to start with, we just use the flat plate until the bearing is no longer visible from the headstock, and then we can use the old outer bearing race to push it all the way home.
Now once you get it to this point, we'll take that back off, slip your rounds of race on first, then you can use that to drive it all the way home. Nice and steady away, feed it binding up, remove it, have an inspection, make sure it's square, otherwise drive her in. Once it's all the way in, it should look something like that, up against the seat, ready for your stem to go back in. So now we're ready for reassembly. We've got our new bearing, outer bearing races in the bike, a little bit of grease around those. We've got our new bearing pressed onto our stem with the seal on the bottom, again, a little bit of grease around that, and our top bearing greased, ready to go, and all the other components for the top. So now we slip the stem up through the bike into position. New top greased bearing, slide it down ready to go. Don't forget our new seal, like so, and then the first of the nuts. We wind this down, making sure your threads are nice and clean before it all goes back together until we make contact. Now, as we can see here, there is actually a torque setting for this nut, which is 52 newton meters, and then back it off completely loose and retighten to 18. Now, if you want to use the torque setting for this, you're going to need a special castellated socket to fit over this lock ring, probably a deep one as well, because they're length for stem left. If you want to get creative, you can get your angle grinder out and make yourself a socket like this, but they're not too expensive. But to be honest with you, in this case, because we have changed the bearings to tapered needle roller bearings, they're not the standard bearings anyway, I'm more inclined to tighten this up as I would any other motorcycle using a C-spanner like this. So what we can do is nip this nut up, holding the lower yoke, until we find that the yoke is actually binding as we're moving it slightly. So it's just, you want to feel it, and as you nip it, you can feel it start to actually resist side to side movement. Once you get it to the point of resisting that side to side movement, there you can feel it's stiff, it's actually binding up. We just need to back it off just a little bit so that we've got nice free movement again. We can check that there's no play forwards and backwards or up and down. So what we're trying to do here is eliminate all the play out of the bearings, but not have it so tight that the bearings are actually compressed and binding up. Once we're happy we've got that in a nice position, we can then put on our secondary nut and wind it down to it. Now we're not graunching this right up against it and locking it off because it will change the preload on the bearings. What we're doing, seeing how it lines up when it makes contact, here we can see it doesn't quite line up with the other castellated bit of the nut. So we don't try and turn that to line them up. We actually back it off slightly until they line up like so. And then we can take our locking collar, slip that guy down. And what actually holds this together is once the top triple clamp's on and the top stem nut, this being torqued down compresses all of that and actually stops these from rotating, or well, that's the theory. Now before we can torque this up successfully, we need to pop our fork legs back in so that they align together nicely. Remember to put the right side in the right leg if you've got like these separate rebound and compression. If they've got rebound and compression on each leg, it's still a good idea to put them back where they come from. Good working practice. So let's slip the forks back in, torque this top cap up. So once you've finally torqued the top stem nut up, you can actually grab your forks 
and check for forward and backwards movement and up and down and check they still move nicely side to side. If that's the case, we're good to go. If you need to adjust it again a bit further, you have to take it back apart and readjust your locking nuts. Once you're happy it's all there, it's just a case of rebuilding it, obviously making sure you've got the right fork heights that you had before and your angles of your clip-ons and everything's the same and put it all back together. So the bike's all back together and looking how it should do. A few quick pointers over the whole job. Sometimes these castellated nuts have a foam or a rubber washer in between them. The idea of that is that you don't have to graunch the top nut onto it. What you don't want to be doing when you're doing that top nut up is actually adding more preload. So once you've set the preload with your lower castellated nut, the top one is just there. You may have to hold the lower one as you nip the top one up round so that the slots line up. You don't want to be adding more preload with the top castellated nut. You adjust it and set it all with the lower one. Don't forget to move it lock to lock as you're tightening them bearings up and preloading them. And once you've got your fork tubes in, you can also grab them from the bottom part of the metal legs here. So you've got a bit more leverage on it to check you've definitely got no free play before you put it back together. Pinch bolts, make sure you always torque these up and make sure you go between one to the other and back to the first one as you tighten one up it will change the torque setting on the other one. Forks in the right side, fork height, exactly as it should be. Pump your brake lever up after you put your calipers back on and check this nut and for any free play after you've taken out for a bit of a ride, the bearings have settled in, just check there's no free play induced into that once it's actually been around the track or been out on the road. So thanks very much for watching today guys. Please do share and subscribe to the channel. Help support the channel if you've enjoyed or found any of the content useful. Please check out some of the other stuff. Uh, join us next time when we'll be out on track hopefully around Brands Hatch Grand Prix and see how we get on with the new head bearings. Look after yourselves, take care, we'll see you soon. Ta-ta!